back to the BYD E6, if you get what I mean. We have now removed the mystery box from here, which revealed a smaller mystery box with high voltage and a description telling us that it's the electricity leakage sensor assembly. So for those of you who don't know about electric cars, the high voltage side is completely separate from the low voltage side, except for the DC to DC converter, which is essentially like an alternator. Um, if anything happens to the battery, that means that somehow there is a connection to the chassis of the car. That is a very bad thing, the chassis of the car being the negative on the 12 volt low voltage side. So that's what this little box here is looking for. It will connect to the negative and the chassis on the 12 volt with one of these pins and the negative of the big battery with that single pin in this very fancy connector. One of many very fancy connectors. Um, and it will measure the resistance and then start squealing or at least tell the dashboard or the computer to start squealing if it finds any kind of connection. So this goes into here and through the miracle of modern science we can now show you what is in fact in here. Are you ready? Are you steady? Ta-da! So what have we got? Well we've got our earth leakage detection for a start. This here is the negative. So on the previous video, I was exceptionally shocked and very unhappy to find that there was no contactors in the battery. This is where the contactors live. So this is the negative to the battery running through a contactor. This is the positive to the battery running through two contactors and then fuses. This bigger one goes out to the inverter side of things, I believe. And this smaller one, it would make sense to me for it to go out to the um, charger side of things, because the motor can do 120 kilowatts, supposedly, and the charger can do 40 kilowatts. And that should be borne out by the fuses. So we've got a big daddy 350 amp on the, what I'm calling the motor side. And we have a mere 150 amp on what I'm calling the charger side of things. I could also be wrong. This could be motor and charger because I believe the charger kind of is the same thing as the motor controller. That could be every other load, like the power steering, uh, not the power steering, like the heater, for example, and almost certainly the air conditioning. But anyhow, two circuits. And then this, back to the positive of the battery, through a shunt which is a thing that measures the current, so it knows how much is flowing. Interestingly, or at least interestingly to me, is that the shunt is branded as BYD. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, BYD. As are the contactors. Um, these big old relays, while not claiming to be anything in particular, are much bigger than any relays I th I've really come across before. They're certainly not standard ones. Um, anyhow, brain, brain, back to shunt, back to this. Yeah, these. Okay, so what else is there to see? These various relays control various things. They go through, they go, basically they get their power from positive parts here, green and red, these two. Then they go through a fuse box, which has its own separate cover, so you can get into this without getting into the main thing. And then they go out and through this multi-pin high voltage, yet again, another really fancy connector, or amphenols, I believe, um, and out. So that could well run the air conditioning and the heating and such. So that accounts for these two. The Gray appears to be the pre-charge resistor, so we can see its cable comes from one side of this contactor, and then you go around here, into here, loop back a bit, trust that you found the right spot, and eventually find yourself back here. 
Um, I realised I didn't show my workings quite properly. Um, and that's basically what you've got in here. Two big bastard fuses, your current shunt, contactors for two sides, I'm saying charging and operating, contactor for the negative, and a bunch of relays for switching smaller current high voltage applications. Ooh, so small brains just realized these are obviously good for doing 400 volts because they do get 400 volts in them. So that could be why they're such big buggers. Maybe I should take one of those out and see what it's all about. Anyhow, before this descends into a um, monologue between myself and myself, uh, I shall stop this video and um, yes, have a stern word with myself about meandering off the topic. All right, hope you learned something. See ya. So here is one of these relays and it's a Panasonic AEV 520 12 volt I'm guessing for the control. Does 520 mean it can do 520 volts? Do we have any idea of how much current it can do? Really, it's not that much lighter than a, um, the Panasonic contactors in a leaf. So that could be a really useful little toy for custom builds. All right, that's all for now. When I said that's all, I lied because as well as these relays for these loads here, I took out that relay which is a fair bit smaller and it only seems to control the pre-charge resistor. These greys, I've beeped them, go basically between here and here via that, 120 ohms. Um, quite a cool looking thing, but yeah. So if that's beefy enough to do the pre-charge, then these heavy buggers should be doing more than that. So yeah, controlling load. So I'm I'm gonna stick my neck out and say high voltage loads non-drive, such as heating, air conditioning, DC to DC, and miscellaneous. Driving, charging. That's you. Alright. That's a wrap. What do you say, Dr. Dre? Yeah, I'm not gonna do the accent, I'll get cancelled.